Coffee Break Collection 15. The World of Work. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Excerpt from The Right to Work by John Elliot Ross, 1884 to 1946. Published in 1917. Recently there appeared in one of our big dailies a cartoon poignantly depicting the beginning and the end of unemployment. Two ragged men sat on a bench in a public square. One slouches down upon the seat, his ears drawn into his collar, his hands in his pockets, a perfect portrayal of the man who has given up the fight. The other has not sunk so far. He is leaning forward his face in his hands, his attitude not yet one of unresentful impotence. His companion says, Cheer up, Bo, think of the men in the trenches. And the reply eloquently voices the suffering of the self-respecting unemployed. Huh? They've got a chance to be shot. There is some hope for the man who would rather die that endure his existence unworthy of a man. He still has some fight in him. If a lifeline can be thrown him, he will be saved. But the man who ceased to desire to work is hopeless. All internal resistance has been broken down. No vestige of self-respect or backbone is left. If he is to be saved, it must be from outside and by being built up anew but there are still blacker shadows to this picture. If it were merely a question of two million men, more or less, responsible for their own fate, sinking into this demoralized condition, it would be serious enough. They might reasonably expect Christians with a command laid upon them to love their neighbor as themselves to do something to help them. But unfortunately, these men are not simply dropping back themselves. They are pulling others with them. Millions of dependent women and children are being dragged into the slough of despond because the heads of families are no longer able to cope with the problem of support. Wives are forced out into casual employment, home duties neglected, Children run wild or have their lives ground out in soul and body-destroying toil. We have heard much recently of the horrible evils of child and woman labor. Thousands of children are stunted in mind and body because they must take their place in industry before their time. Children have actually been killed by excessive work in factories, and others who do not go to work have hardly a better fate. In every school in the poorer districts of our cities, you can see the pinched and sallow faces, the spindle legs, bespeaking slow starvation. Women, too, at the most critical periods, when other lives are depending so directly upon theirs, are compelled to such heavy labor as saps not only their own vitality, but the strength of the coming generation. How can they possibly nourish two on what is not sufficient for one? How can children born into such conditions be anything but weak and sickly and fretful? directly or indirectly unemployment is responsible for all these ills for even when the head of the family has work it is the fear of unemployment that makes him accept less than a living wage and then drives his wife and children to eke out his pittance with their own this is the sword of democles that is constantly over the helpless working man's head he does not know at what moment it may fall to maim forever not only himself but also his loved ones. But this does not exhaust the evils of unemployment. Like some great octopus, it is reaching out its fearful tentacles to draw millions upon millions into its greedy maw. It is not content with its immediate victims and their dependents, but it poisons the life of the whole community. Obviously, the Good Samaritan is affected, for whence come the food and clothing and shelter that the idle need? 
these men must be supported in some way if there were two million men idle last winter then for every day of idleness at least two million dollars in wages are lost and while naturally this huge army does not spend as much in times of idleness as it did when employed nevertheless it must need tremendous sums for its support some of this money comes from past savings but much must also come from those who are still employed the longer idleness continues the more of a burden does this army of unemployed become yet another loss to the community is derived from the fact that if these men had continued working they would have added to the wealth of the nation about two and one-half times their wages that is to say if their wages would have been a billion dollars the total product of their labor would have been worth before deducting their pay three and one-half billions such a loss of national wealth would be serious under any conditions but it is doubly serious when we are paying a fuel bill as it were to burn it up if a fire or earthquake or flood were to destroy this much wealth every paper in the country would deplore it why then do we calmly ignore this much worse condition which yearly engulfs not alone material wealth but the very life's blood of the nation in ruined manhood and womanhood and childhood again the business men who have to bear the burden of charity to support these unemployed must do so from decreased resources because of the lessened purchasing power of the public no man can prosper in business unless his neighbor prospers too the merchant is engaged in selling and the greater his neighbor's power to pay the more he can sell the corner groceryman realizes this well he knows that if his patrons are out of work his bills will be unpaid and others are affected similarly though not so visibly inability to sell reacts too upon the wages of employees as well as upon the profits of employers so that the effects of unemployment reaches all classes the working men employed the merchant the good samaritan the priest and the levite still further the fact that two million persons are consuming without producing means that the cost of living will rise for prices will be higher than they would be were the supply increased by the possible product of all these idle workers there is then no way in which any one can pass by on the other side of these unfortunates whether or not their hearts are touched with christian charity the blight of their brother's misfortune will shadow their fortune only the very few such as loan sharks who make a business of preying upon the poor can profit by large masses being out of work all legitimate business suffers directly or indirectly it has frequently been said that each workman in europe is carrying a soldier on his back but it is a vigorous soldier who can be of some use to his country with us the workers are carrying an army on their backs but it is a helpless a useless a vicious consuming and non-producing army that can do the country no good under any conditions it is almost as if each laborer were carrying a foreign invading soldier on their back we have often heard it said during the present war that europe has reverted to barbarism other people are aghast at the destruction of life and property going on abroad they thank god that they are not as other men that they have more christian charity more love for their brothers than to indulge in such senseless slaughter yet it might be better for us to stand afar off in the temple and strike our breasts while asking god to be merciful to us sinners for the comparison is not entirely to our credit the soldier dies with an ideal in his heart with love for his country and his hearth with his manhood intact our poor ragged soldier does not perhaps lose his life he loses only his self-respect his manhood his faith in his fellow man his faith in god 
in this army of ours there is none of the morale that comes from discipline none of the spiritual exaltation that is induced by consecration to a cause none of the confidence and efficiency inspired by trusted leaders our soldier has strength but is forbidden to use it has protectiveness that is turned to bitter raging impotence he has skill which is lost in the gradual relaxation of physical and moral fiber his vision becomes shifty his muscles relaxed his will feeble and if he does not escape in time it will take a miracle to save him almost literally he will have to be born again if he is to be redeemed end of excerpt from right to work